Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game. What's my line? Remington Rand, makers of the Remington, the world's number one electric shaver, presents What's My Line? <laughs> now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. charming young humorist who stars in his own television show five nights a week on another network, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you. And on my left, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television who has her own show, Talent Patrol, on another network every... What night is it now? Now that you asked me, it's Thursday. Thursday night. <laughs> they switched it on me. Here is Arlene <clears throat> Francis. Steve, and on my left, substituting for Bennett Surf, and quite a substitute, Bennett, I must say, <laughs> is a young lady who has been mentioned for the Academy Award for her performance in From Here to Eternity, who is enchanting New York audiences by her lovely performance in Tea and Sympathy, Miss Deborah Carr. Thank you. I'm going to hire you. <laughs> and on my left, I think this is where I say this, <laughs> the one, the only, Mr. John Daly. Thank you, Miss Deborah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Got a letter here from Bennett Surf. He's out in La Quinta in California, and it says the show followed him. He got a letter from some young ladies who said we made a mistake, that there aren't male and female worms. We'll look into that later on. But once again tonight, we're going to put our cameras close up from some nice people who've come with some nice occupations. We think a nice occupation is an occupation that gives the panel a lot of trouble. We anticipate they'll have some trouble tonight. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on. But let's get things underway. It's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they have to spot. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Francis? Francis Borgen. Borgen. Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Vaughan, and where are you from, Mrs. Vaughan? Uh, Bonner Springs, Kansas. Bonner Springs, Kansas. Well, it's real nice to have somebody from Kansas with us. Thank you. So, usually we have people from the eastern seaboard and the western seaboard, and we like the panel to know all kinds of nice folks from the Midwest. So suppose <laughs> you go over and meet them, will you? Hello. How do you do? All right, now, Mrs. Vaughan, if you'll come over here and sit down next to me, I think perhaps you know that uh, the panel gets one free guess as to what your line may be, and we always begin our free guesses with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. I think she's a police matron. A police matron, Mr. Allen. I think she does the hiring of the soft drink plant. I think she hires root beer. Oh, no. oh brother. Oh. Miss Francis. I think Mrs. Vaughan runs a general store in Kansas. Miss Carr. I think Mrs. Vaughan is a, is a milliner here to see the spring styles and hats. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Frances Vaughan of Bonner Springs, Kansas, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> but Mrs. Vaughan, the panel has got to work, and I trust that you're going to make them work very hard. However, every time you can give them a no answer, we'll flip a card, and ten no's, ten flips, and you've won the game. Are you all ready to go? Already. All right, Mrs. Vaughan is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Vaughan? No. That's Mrs. one down and nine to go. <laughs> All right, Miss Carr. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, is there a product in what you no. do? Not in our terms of reference. The product is not considered to be vital here. This is two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you deal with both? Yes. I presume that you deal in services. Yes. Uh, do they come to you? I would say to the degree that Mrs. Vaughan performs a service that the uh, necessary ingredient ingredients for the performance of the service are brought to her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you work for any branch of any government? Could you say... Yes. Uh, is, yes. It a, is it a local government in Kansas? 
Rather, By what do you mean local? Well, uh, state or city rather than federal. <coughs> yes. Is it state? Yes. Uh, do you work at all outdoors? No. Three, <laughs> three down and seven to go, Mr. Allen. Could an adverse decision of any sort by you in your professional capacity make anyone unhappy? Yes. Do you run something or govern something, or are you in some position of authority? Uh... That's a very good question. Yes. It's three very good questions. <laughs> you can give three. <laughs> yes to that one. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything possibly to do with the law? With the law? Yes. In a way, yes. yes. The implementation thereof, in some degree or another. Well, I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> uh, do you have anything? Could you have anything to do with uh, prisoners or people under arrest? Or no. no. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything whatsoever to do with uh, discipline? No. Uh, just more. We'll have a small conference. <laughs> I wonder if she's here on business or pleasure. <laughs> it's pleasure when you're sitting with John, you know, huh? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Vaughan is of very tender sensibilities and would not care to mislead you. The question as to discipline was asked in such general terms that we hesitate to give you a no, so we will give you a qualified yes. Swell. Uh. <laughs> I'll give you a qualified thank you. <laughs> do you have anything at all to do with children, Mrs. Vaughan? No. I don't think no. so. Not uh, in any specific no. degree. Five down and five to go, Miss Carr. Oh, that's got me. I was going to ask you, do you teach anything? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with carrying out a law or rule or regulation? Yes. Does this ever involve anything other than human beings? Yes. yes. <laughs> it could. Would it ever have anything to do with animals? With animals? Well, no. Uh, <coughs> I uh, would say that uh, indirectly we could come into contact with some animals in this operation, couldn't we? Mm, possibly, yeah. Well, does Mrs. Vaughan have anything to do with licensing? That is a very good question. We'll have a conference. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Vaughan is very tender in her sensibility. <laughs> 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 Hesitates. <laughs> Hesitates to give a no answer, but we'll give but you one anyway. Give me okay? One. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Allen. I'm going to give you one more minute to get this. It'll do you no good. <laughs> Uh, neither humans nor animals. Does she have anything to do with uh, farms or uh, plants or growing anything, anything of that sort? Mm, no. no. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Does she have anything to do with vehicular traffic of any Vehicular time? transportation, moving from one place to another, you mean? <laughs> well, all right, give me the no and don't build it up that way. <laughs> Nine down and one to go, Miss Carr. May I have a conference, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I was thinking of something like game warden or, uh, you know, that, that sort of thing, but apparently um, she I, doesn't uh, consider that, that I wasn't that's thinking. on the nose. <laughs> what were you thinking of, Arlene? Uh, nothing except I was thinking of, you know, sort of vice president in charge of the zoo. <laughs> well, well, that would be definitely, definitely animals. Yes. All right, the conference the conservation time is up. Traffic. Uh, traffic. Mid car. <sighs> Oh, damn, my chums haven't helped me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit. Um, uh, maybe she'd ask if she wears a uniform. Yes, do you do you wear uh, some kind of a uniform or costume for no. what you do? That's ten down and no yeah, more to go. At least it got you well. <laughs> Panel, hang on to your chairs. Mrs. Vaughan is a movie censor for the state of Kansas. <laughs> Badly about that. <laughs> <laughs> what a happy circumstance brings us all together in the same house. And let's see, Mrs. Vaughan, you got the full prize, and I must say you deserved it. We hope you had fun to it. It was Thank nice you. having you and what's my line. Good night, ma'am. <laughs> all right, panel, let's see. It's going to be a tough night for you. I promise you that. New challenger, will you sign in, please, sir? Cliff. Cliff Olson. 
Where are you from, Mr. Olson? Hickory, North Carolina. Hickory, North Carolina. Yeah, good deal. Uh, come up today? No, yesterday. Yesterday? Well, then you're not very tired, huh? No, not too tired. Good. Long trip. Go meet the panel, will you? Hi. Hello. Hello, Howdy. Mr. Olson. All right, Mr. Olson, come on over here and sit down. I know it's hard to tear yourself away from a panel with three young ladies on it and just Steve Allen, but you ought to go over here and join me. We'll let them get going on the free guess, which is always given the panel at this point in the game. And we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a track coach. A track coach? Mr. Allen? I think he uh, installed stingers on Hudson Hornets. <laughs> Miss Branson? I think he hickory cures hams. Miss Carr? I think he looks remarkably like the man who was coughing so much in the front row last night. <laughs> <laughs> that he might have been, but that has not anything to do with his line. So we'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Olson. At the same time, we will tell them what his line is. <laughs> and Mr. Olson, the rules are simplicity itself. Every time you give them a no answer, I flip a card. Every flip of the card costs the penny five dollars and ten flips, and you've won the game. All right, Mr. Olson is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with um, Steve Allen. Mr. Olson, is there a product connected with your work? Yes. Is it uh, what might be described as a useful product? Yes. Uh, could any of the members here on the panel tonight... Uh, put this <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, well, since I'm outnumbered three to one here tonight, uh, might I guess that uh, one of my colleagues would be more apt to use this than I would? Yeah, I think we could say that yeah. one of your colleagues would be more apt to use it. Uh, could this be described as something uh, then uh, decorative or pretty to look at? Uh, in any sense at all? Uh, Could be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Might you uh, ever see one of these things in a place like, say, uh, Tiffany's? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, to nail this right down, then, is this something that, that a, a woman would be more apt to use than a man? Yes. Is there sometimes a great deal of, uh, sentiment <laughs> concerned with the, uh, use of this particular item? I would think that we could say that there is sometimes a great deal of sentiment connected with the use of this particular item. Yeah. Uh, to get definite again, could one of the members of the panel perhaps be uh, sporting one of these at this moment? <laughs> Mr. Olson isn't quite sure, but I will take it upon I will take it upon myself to say yes. Well, I will take it upon myself to pass. <laughs> uh, Miss Francis. I can only think that all that laughter must in some way be a tribute to Dorothy. <laughs> And I wonder if this has anything whatsoever to do with motherhood, does it? Yes. This product has something to do with motherhood. Yes. Uh, would it have anything to do with the clothes that might be worn by a mother? Yes. Do you, you in some way deal in maternity clothes? Yes. yes. Uh, do you uh, manufacture maternity clothes? Doesn't manufacture. One dollar. I know it doesn't model. Miss Carr. Do you you sell? Sells maternity clothes. That's right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Mr. Olson, we haven't had this much fun in a long time. Let's flip all the cards and have a look. <laughs> Thanks very much. You were wonderful. Very nice going, panel. You knocked that one off. Didn't think you would. Just a moment. We're going to meet tonight's mystery guest. But first, here is Dick Stark to bring you some close harmony. Friends, here is a timely tune that is just bound to bring back that old barber shop quartet. It's a great new song about that great new shaver, the Remington. Okay, boys, take it away. For the shave you've always wanted, the shave you've never had. Reach for the Remington and you'll be glad. Though your skin is awfully tender, your beard is awfully tough. Reach for the Remington and that's enough. For the shaver that can shave a brush will make your beard behave. The shaver that can shave a peach will give you a peach of a shave. So tomorrow see your dealer and try it for a while. Reach for the Remington on this free trial. And you ladies, if you're shopping for presents on the sly, Reach for the Remington to give your guy. Well, thank you, boys. That's wonderful. Isn't that a wonderful song? I particularly like the part right in here that goes, For the shaver that can shave a brush will make your beard behave. The shaver that can shave a peach will give you a peach of a shave. Believe me, that is really the truth. This amazing Remington will give you a close, comfortable shave no matter how tough your beard, no matter how tender your skin. You know, that is so true. Men are getting such wonderful shaves from the Remington that throughout the world, more people buy Remington shavers than any other make. So tomorrow see your dealer and try it for a while. Reach for the Remington on this free trial. And you ladies, if you're shopping for presents on the sly, reach for the Remington to give your guide. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. My friends in the panel would recognize our guest immediately, so as usual, they have been supplied with blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you in the world of entertainment? Grab it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> I asked the same question, Miss Dorothy. That was Martian talk. It means yes. Uh, are you uh, in what might be termed show business rather than the athletic world? Reindendorf and the Skyboing. <laughs> yes, yes, sure. That means yes. Are you a performer? The move. That also means yes. Uh, uh, have you ever been in the movies? It's a moo moo. That means yes, too. Have you ever been on television? Uh, Gleekendorf and Treaty Sack. <laughs> that means it, indubitably. Uh, do you do anything in addition to straight acting, such as comedy, singing, dancing, or playing a musical instrument? Uh, cough and tap it. <laughs> this, this means yes, oh, thank you. Well, do you sing? Uh. <laughs> one, one down and nine to go. That was a no, Mr. Allen. Uh, are you a man? Uh... It's medical and sign, boy. TV. That means no. Two down and eight to go. Miss Preston. Craveny on the treadle by the crams van? Nothing's happened. 
Uh, you are therefore a woman. Correct? <laughs> Very good, Miss Arley. Are you a leading woman rather than a character actress? It's a moo. Huh? As I remember, moo was yes a few questions ago. <laughs> I'm having a little trouble here. This is, uh, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. You say you have appeared on television indubitably. Does that mean that you are seen quite a lot on television? Clang song. That means yes. Yes? Uh, do you have your own show on television? Well, Langendorf and Kaisi. <laughs> I take it there are three, huh? Well, flag is sneaky, too. <laughs> Do you have somebody with you on television? Yeah. Does that mean you? Rabbit. Right? Rabbit. Yeah, that, yeah. I see. You are a couple, uh, uh, either a man and wife or, or a man and a woman who, are, uh, who play a dramatic... Um, Half hour of some kind? You want me to take you out of that or you want to get out by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Her language has got me all <laughs> Yes would be the answer to that. Yes would be the answer? Mm hmm. Uh, is there a picture of yours now playing on Broadway? No, no. No, wait a minute, we got to have a conference. <laughs> no? In the term as we use playing in Broadway, yes. Um, have you uh, been in, uh, well, certainly the top 10 or 15 in television shows? And I am black tongue by secret tongue guys. And fluke and die. I forgot, fluke and die. This is, what happens when, this is what happens when you have dinner lump fogs that come to this program. <laughs> that would be yes. That would be yes. Mm -hmm. Were you not too long ago interested in the same kind of clothes that the previous contestant had uh, as his profession on this program? On Flab and Devon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Miss Carr, do you know who this is? Well, I think is it must be. Who do you think it, it is? Must be Lucy. It certainly <laughs> is. It's Lucy. That's wonderful, isn't it? What? To hear somebody like Miss Lucy Ball come and say that she was so nervous she almost didn't have a voice left. No. <laughs> I suppose that's one reason why you're such a fine artist, because you do have the humility to be, and I use the word in its best sense, to be a little bit nervous no matter what you do. But I also know that you're in New York with other interests than television and your picture, and I figured that was something probably you would rather talk about than me talk about. Well, it's certainly a very exciting ten days that we are embarked upon, it's sort of half over. I think we're going to make the grade. I think we're going to get home all right. But New York after four years. Wowie! <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say one thing. The Heart Fund needs your help. Help your heart. Help the Heart Fund. Please. Uh, Good night, very, everyone. Very succinctly put. Thanks very much for being here. Thanks. We've had two wonderful people now. We had Desi Arnaz some time ago, now his lovely wife. We have, I think, very little time, but we have a very tricky occupation. I think we'd like to see what the panel can do with it. So our next challenger, come in and sign in, please. Tom Wiswell. Thank you, sir. Where are you from? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Fine, you come on over here with me, if you will, because we don't have time for you to walk down in front of the panel. Panel, we have very little time. Actually, you have less than two minutes to try and get a rather special kind of occupation. You get your free guesses first. We begin with Miss Kilgallen. Income tax investigator. Mr. Allen. I think Wiswell predicts in baby talk. Miss Francis. I think he's a laboratory technician. Miss Carr. I think he puts the pimentos in olives. No, nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Wiswell, tell them at the same time what his line is, and then see what the panel can do with it. 
All right, Mr. Griswell. You know the rules. We flip the card every time, and, uh... Ten flips, and you've got it. Mr. Wiswell is self-employed. Let's begin the general questioning with Miss Carr. Uh, do you deal in services, Mr. Wiswell? Yes. Wilson? Is there a product connected with no. what you do? That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do your services pertain to both men and women? Yes. Uh, do you uh, do mental-type work? Yes. Is your work more mental than physical? Yes. Uh, do you need a special training for your job? Yes. Do you work indoors? Yes. Do people come to you? Sometimes. And sometimes you go to them? Sometimes. Do you ever have occasion to touch them? No. no. Wouldn't think so. Two down and eight to go, and Steve, we got about 20 seconds. Do you work in the area of one of the sciences? I think so. No, Probably. not... Most people say no. <laughs> no, I would... Most not, people say no. Not technically speaking. It's not a science. Three down and seven to go, Miss Arley. Is there anything spiritual about your work? I don't think so. No, that, I think, winds up. I was hoping that you might take a wild stab and get this because it's a very interesting occupation. Mr. Weswell is the world's champion professional checker player. Oh, oh. And he gets the full prize by reason of default on time, and I thank for being our guest. Thank you, sir. We'll be back. We'll be back in just a moment, but first, here is Dick Stark with an impressive reminder. A whopping big $7.50 trade-in allowance. That's 50% more than anyone else gives you, and that's what you'll get for your old electric shaver when you turn it in on this man-sized Remington. Yes, sirree. So tomorrow, trade in your old shaver and reach for the Remington, a product of Remington Rand, famous, too, for Remington typewriters and the finest in business machines. And now, before our panel says goodnight, may I remind you to tune in again next Sunday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when once again we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Here is an offer from Stop at Spray Deodorant that you won't want to miss, but you'll have to hurry. This special value package of New Stop at with its anti-immunity factor, gives you a 45-day trial bottle free when you buy New Stop Bet at the regular price. Use the trial bottle, and we know you'll be convinced that New Stop Bet is more effective than ever. Otherwise, return the regular size, and your money will be refunded. This offer is limited, but you may still be able to find this special package with its generous trial bottle in your store. So hurry. Well, it's been grand having Miss Deborah Carr as our guest tonight. I didn't think you could get three such lovely women sitting in one desk all at one time. And Miss Carr appeared tonight on behalf of the New York Lighthouse for the Blind. In appreciation, the producers of What's My Line are sending a check in her name to that very worthy cause. And we offer our thanks for having such a lovely guest on our program. Next week, we'll have another guest panelist. And until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Get your pajamas on, boys, and good night, Arlene. <laughs> do do that, won't you, boys? <laughs> it was lovely to have you with us, Deborah, and good night. Thank you, Arlene. Good night, and good night, John. Good night, ma'am. Good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Life? <laughs> Association with the CBS Television Network.